Hello and welcome to 10 Minute Takes. This is where we give you the rating first, then we discuss what we liked and didn't like about the movie we just saw. Today's episode is Night School. Night you, School. You ready to rate this one? Mm-hmm. So our rating system is either a see it, wait for it, or a pass it. So three, two, one, see, see it. it. <laughs> Definitely. Tiffany Haddish is on a roll. She's so good. She is really good. She's amazing. So Night School tells the story of Teddy Walker, who is played by Kevin Hart. And Teddy Walker starts out as the number one salesperson at his job. He works for a uh, sales place that sells grills. I mean, specifically, it's like a grill center. And he's the top employee there. And through an unfortunate set of events, he winds up without a job and he has an opportunity to get another job, but to get that job, he needs to get a GED. And on top of it, he has a fiance that doesn't know that he's lost his job. So he needs to do all this while keeping that a secret from the woman that he loves. And with that said, uh, the film is super charming. It's really good, super funny. And I felt like it was everything that the trailers did not portray it to be. I, I totally agree. So, like, the trailer, before we went, we were talking about how we weren't excited for this movie. I was yeah. Like, okay, let's go see it. Thursday night, we see movies on Thursday nights. Why not? And I wasn't excited about it, but I was, from the beginning and the opening sequence to all the way through the movie, I was very pleasantly surprised, and it was hysterical. <laughs> It was great. I completely agree. And I'm a big Kevin Hart fan. I'm a big Tiffany Haddish fan. I was a Tiffany Haddish fan before people knew who Tiffany Haddish was. I edited on a TV show that Tiffany Haddish was in before she blew up, like three or four years ago. And Me? she was my favorite person. She was my favorite comedian on that show that I worked on. Yeah. Anytime I got to work on that show, I was like, give me the Tiffany footage because I want to watch what she's saying because she is hysterical. Uh, she blew up in Girls Trip. Girls Trip was unanimously loved. I loved it. It was a, It's a see it for me for Girls Trip. Right. She wins again in this one. Kevin Hart is also one of my favorite stand-up comedians. His original stand-up specials that you can see, I believe they're on Netflix, are some of the best. And I think Kevin Hart's strength as a stand-up comedian is what lends itself to this film. And I think that's a disconnect to the trailer. Because like stand-up comedy this movie's punchlines are very very they're well thought out they're well made and the punchlines work because there's a good lead up to the punchlines and the trailers that we were talking about we were talking about this in the car where i felt like the trailer gave us the punchlines without the context so like anytime you're watching stand-up comedy if someone's just going to give you the punchline without the context of the joke it's not going to work and i felt like the trailer was just a series of punchlines without the lead up to make it funny and in the context of the film, all the things that we saw in the trailer that uh, didn't seem appealing to me worked. The trailer did not portray the movie at all. It didn't give it justice. I don't want to say, it, it's not that it was an original story, but it's well thought out. It has a lot of heart. The whole aspect with him and his girlfriend, which is not in the trailer at all, leads a lot of weight mm -hmm. to, or lends a lot of weight to this film. Weight that I felt like the trailer didn't portray and it felt, it, the trailer felt very uh, superficial. Mm -hmm. And the movie's actually anti-superficial. It actually has a lot of heart to it. So with all this said, what are some of your favorite things about this movie? There's one thing in particular we were talking about on the way home that you liked a lot. My, my favorite thing about the entire movie was the way that they portrayed his learning disability. So he has this learning disability that he struggled with in high school, which ultimately made him drop out and it is a struggle that is very widely common with students and adults and i really appreciated that they were able to look at this learning disability as a struggle and not a stigma they didn't crack to they didn't crack any jokes besides this one small segment about learning disabilities and then they took that heart that they have in the movie and they made him go back and go back and go back until he was successful. Like it made him switch his lens or switch his light on what school is and he was able to go about school in a different way because mm -hmm. he figured out 
why he was struggling in the first place and they didn't put it as a stigma they put it as a struggle which ultimately made kevin hart's character better and to your point with the whole the way they approach his uh, disabilities learning disabilities in the trailer he just says oh i have learning herpes that to me like it was kind of funny in the trailer but without the context of the lead up to that it didn't it hits in the movie in a far different way than it does in the trailer yeah and that's sort of like that i believe that's part of the strengths that kevin hart has but in the context of the movie with another thing where they were tiffany haddish actually as the teacher one of the things i really appreciated about the film was tiffany haddish was portrayed as a teacher that went the extra mile to help him because mm-hmm. i had teachers like that when i was in high school right where i was add and i needed to take extra time during uh uh, either social studies or lunch to go work teachers work with teachers to get over uh, my own ADD that I have to try and ingest this information that I couldn't get just during the time in the class and Tiffany Haddish one of the ways she teaches Kevin Hart is that she gets him into a boxing ring and that was also one of those things in the trailers I didn't like that scene in the trailer when she punches him in the face because there's no context for it right but with the context that she's trying to help him by giving him a different approach to learning mm-hmm. It was every, makes, that, makes that scene, like, tick, I guess, in a way. It was everything a movie needs to inform people about learning disabilities. Mm-hmm. And it was done in such an amazing way that you were able to really sit back and say, oh, if you're struggling with anything in learning, then you don't just give up. You keep pursuing and you move forward to the best of your ability until you achieve exactly what you want to achieve. And this was the perfect movie. This is the perfect movie to take somebody who has a disability, especially in high school, who's feeling a little bit low right now because they just can't seem to figure things out in school. This is the movie to take them to. Has a wonderful message to it. It's a beautiful message to those students that just because you're struggling and giving up, it's not gonna do you any good. You just have to keep moving forward. Just to be clear, he doesn't know he has disabilities in the beginning. You right, can see that he, he has problems, but he doesn't know what these problems are. And it's not explained until, it's not addressed until a little later in the film that he has these disabilities and then he needs to take a different approach to his education. Well, I think the wonderful thing about it is that he's, there is a, a segment where all of the mathematical problems come out of him and he kind of starts swatting at them and swatting at them and he can't figure out how to put them together. That is a beautiful description of what his disability is, what dyslexia can be and how it can be Mm -hmm. a struggle for people. And it's the best way that you can show somebody who doesn't understand or someone who's trying to teach somebody certain things with that particular disability what they are going through in the lens of the person with these disabilities they were able to do that and execute that very well along with making it so funny that's a very funny film i mean it's pretty much outside of one or two scenes in the film i was laughing at everything i felt like i was supposed to laugh at now with that said i want to segue into the things that i mean for me it's probably a minor nitpick at best into the things that I disliked and it's really just one scene and I didn't find it funny and it didn't work and outside of this one scene everything else worked for me but there's one particular scene where we're uh, introduced to the night school class and everyone starts introducing themselves and it's one of those scenes where every time someone introduces themselves they're trying to be have like a joke and none of the jokes landed none of that particular segment of this uh, film stuck for me and I felt like they just kept on because the jokes weren't working they tried to drag them out to mm-hmm. try and make them work and the scene and felt good. the scene at by the time it was over felt like it was long and I could have done with a much shorter version of this one particular scene where we introduced the cast of characters in the night school but outside of that one scene I mean, that's my only real nitpick with this film and I think that I, I know you were you don't agree with me on this one, but I think that a lot of the points in that particular segment that you were talking about is in the trailer, and that was the reason why I didn't really get too excited to see it, because I didn't find it funny. Yeah, in that particular scene, there are some scenes from that particular scene in the trailer, and those scenes aren't funny. There's far funnier moments in the movie, which 
I kind of like and don't like it because they didn't put the funniest moments of the film in the trailer. But I think the trailer almost did a disservice to it because there's also a lot of heart that they didn't put into it. Uh, they did use quite a bit from this one particular scene. It's not that funny to build the trailer from. Uh, but that is just a minor nitpick from a film that I actually really, really, really liked and that resonated with me. And I was actually, by the end of it, when we were at the, the final couple of scenes, like I was really moved. I clapped I was, and I was, I was like, I was that sort was of great. Like climbing, I was like sort of climbing up a little bit on the inside. like. It moved me quite a bit at the end. Yeah, I I just thought that the ending was perfect. I clapped and I was like, that was great. That was perfect. I, I agree. Me 100% go see it. Uh, this is one of the surprises of the summer for me. Uh, do you have any final thoughts? Overall, I think it was really enjoyable. And I think anybody can go see this. It I really agree. isn't. It, I don't know what the rating is, but it, it's a great movie for all different ages. I should say surprise of the fall. I believe we're in the fall season now. Uh, so yes, first surprise are. of the fall. I didn't think, I have no idea what other people are saying about this. Uh, was really just not excited to see this one. Came out blown away. Uh, so 100%. If you're on the fence about seeing this, highly recommend it. Go well worth it. it. Great Friday night movie. So Wonderful. Go see it. Uh, that's it for this episode. We have Smallfoot and Hellfest coming. And we also might have another movie coming on Sunday as well. So stay tuned for that. If you like this review and want to see more, subscribe to our channel because we have more coming and we do this weekly. So thanks for watching. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs>